Yo, what is up guys, your boy Zikage here with the movie for what if Naruto had a symbiote. Yes, I know, I've been gone for a while and if you guys have checked out the community tab, you'd know that the recording for this video got corrupted, an entire hour gone, like Thanos snapped it away. So after that, I just got hella lazy and kept putting off redoing it, but now I'm finally here. And if you guys want to talk to me or anyone in the community, Discord link in the description. And this is, of course, a sponsored video, so link for that in the description as well. But more on that later on. Let's just get right into the what if. So we'll be starting this one off 10 years before Naruto's birth to when Orochimaru was still in the village. So in a regular Orochimaru fashion, he's been experimenting on orphan kids. And one day while Orochimaru was out of his lab, he saw something like a shooting star, but it came down and crashed like nearby him. So Orochimaru went to check it out and he found a rock at the crash site, but something weird was there. This red goop was crawling out of it and this caught Orochimaru's eyes. So he contained it and returned to his lab and Orochimaru dropped it on his desk and be began observing this creature and said, it looks like it's searching for something, maybe a parasite. And hearing this, the goop started pushing against the walls even harder and Orochimaru said, okay, seems it doesn't like being called parasite, symbiote it is. Now, let's test a few theories. So, Kabuto, he retrieved uh, one of the test subjects, and like a minute later, he returned with a orphan kid, and Orochimaru released the symbiote onto the kid, and it started covering this kid's body, but the symbiote could tell this body was far too weak. It was frail, and the symbiote unbound itself from the kid, but in this process, killing him and Orochimaru quickly grabbed the symbiote so it wouldn't escape, and he would continue his experiments for about a month, but Hiruzen would catch wind of this, and this is when um, Orochimaru would be banished from the village, um, like still with the symbiote, and becoming a rogue ninja. So we skipped uh, around 10 years later to the Ninetales attack, and you know the masked man is fighting against Minato, and after that, the Ninetales is sealed within Naruto. So this entire time, Naruto has been living with Hiruzen for about three years now, fulfilling uh, Kushina's wish, but that didn't last long because Naruto's, for Naruto's fourth birthday, Hiruzen, he gave him the best present a four-year-old could ask for his own place to live, you know, real smart there, Hiruzen. So Naruto starts getting used to this life and seeing Hiruzen now and then, getting money for food now and then, but Donzo was about to end this man's whole career. He starts spreading rumors that Naruto was the Ninetales, was, was the Ninetales, not the Jinchuriki, he was just an embodiment of the Ninetales. And the zero IQ villagers were like, what? I, I was always wondering where those whiskers came from, and it must be true. So with that little thinking, the villagers started hating this kid for just existing. And for this, they wouldn't let him into stores, allow him to buy anything. Naruto's life was pretty messed up. So one day, Naruto decided to get away from things, and he went to the forest and began walking through and just like I think it was a filler episode like Naruto went fishing and was cooking up uh like cooked up some fish he was playing in the river and Naruto was just having a fun little time and on his way back home he came across a small crater and in this crater was a weird looking rock and Naruto picked it up because it looked cool it was completely black it had sharp edges and surprisingly light for a rock the size of an adult adult fist. So Naruto started walking back home and he was blocked by three bullies. And one of them said, if it isn't the demon, you pay for what you did to my mom. And Naruto was confused like, my guy, I've never seen your mom in my life. And the bully said, shut up. And one of them grabbed the rock from Naruto's hands and said, what were you planning to do with this, huh? And he threw it back at Naruto, like slamming right in his face. 
and this caused Naruto to fall backwards and Naruto held his nose and started crying and he said, I, I never did anything to any of you. And the main bully said, whatever, come on guys, let's teach him a lesson. But the rock next to Naruto started to come to life and formed like a black goop around Naruto. And Naruto's hand started moving on its own and he was freaking out, which is honestly a natural reaction to some black goop starting to cover your hand. And one of the bullies went to punch Naruto and without even thinking about it, Naruto's hand blocked the punch and pushed the kid back into the others, knocking all of them to the ground. And Naruto looked at his hand with this black stuff all over it and then it disappeared into his skin. And Naruto starts freaking out and he rushes home. He looks into the mirror and Venom covered half of Naruto's face and said, Hello. And Naruto freaked out so much, he passed out. <laughs> so, while Naruto, he's trying to comprehend what's happening, if any of you didn't catch it, this isn't the same symbiote that Orochimaru has. Well, it kinda is, but it isn't. It'll all make sense later. But yeah, the symbiote right here is different from the one I mentioned at the start. Also, if you guys are enjoying this what if so far and you want to support your boy, go check out the link in the description for some fire anime merch. Um, the website is fandom, they have some awesome designs from Demon Slayer and Naruto to MHA and Attack on Titan. Any anime you love, they will more than likely have it. So cop anything you like for this holiday season and remember to use code Izukage for 5% off. Now back to the what if. So Naruto, he woke up a few minutes later and something in his head spoke to him and said, I thought you wouldn't wake up. Hurry up and get yourself together. That Hokage guy is showing up. And Naruto doesn't know where this voice is coming from, but hearing that Hiruzen is coming, Naruto quickly makes his bed, you know, puts all the dirty plates in the sink. And then uh, Hiruzen opens Naruto's door and Naruto was casually leaning against his counter and Hiruzen walked in and asked Naruto, like, how was everything? And Naruto just said, uh, everything was alright. And... Uh, like he was trying to play it cool this entire time while the symbiote was talking to Naruto as Hiruzen was so it was really hard to balance both conversations but eventually Hiruzen left and Naruto said okay okay shut up I just want to know why me you said you crash landed here over a decade ago and the symbiote said well I sort of lost a piece of me you could call it my offspring and I need to get it back and Naruto was confused how this thing has offsprings, but he's just rolling with it. And Naruto asks uh, something else, like, what is your name? And the symbiote thought for a second and said, call me Venom. And Naruto is like, well, all right, Venom, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. Maybe we can work together. And Venom said, sure. I also know about um, your goal to become Okage, so I can really help out with that. You know, I was sifting through your memories earlier when you were knocked out. And Naruto didn't know how to take that, but sure. So for the following four years, Venom was teaching Naruto different things, mainly just uh, studying in preparation for the academy, learning about chakra, and also Naruto learned about Venom's, let's say appetite so naruto feeds venom with one person a month and that's the deal they came to now the this morning is the first day of the academy so naruto woke up and ran to ichiraku and naruto started scarfing down bowls of ramen he went through 10 and still wasn't done but he didn't want to be late for school so naruto ran off leaving teyuchi with a mountain of bowls to clean but with his, you know, mystical powers, Teyuchi would have it done in no time. Since we all know Teyuchi, he is multi, like, multi-universal level. <laughs> he has some god powers. So, now when Naruto walked into class, he saw all the friend groups talking to each other and such. So, he went to the back of the class and Naruto sat there, sat there for a while. And finally, Iruka comes in, like their teacher. And he begins to call roll saying uh, Kiba, Kiba is like here, Naruto here. And once he's finished and Iruka starts getting into like normal class things, 
off rip naruto is at the top of the class he's a top student he's answering every question iruka shot at the class and to the point of where iruka is like naruto can you let the others answer and naruto just he's he's banned from answering any more questions for the rest of the day so people were surprised you know naruto was never really a social kid since he got the symbiote sir so early he never acted out pulling pranks or anything like that and while Naruto is just sitting around, Hinata was staring at Naruto this entire time. And Venom said to Naruto, I think that Hyuga over there has been looking at you for a while. And Naruto shrugged it off and said, so what? And Venom said, so what? Bro, she 100% likes you. And Naruto's like, you don't know that. And he's like, Naruto, trust me. I'm the best wingman alive. She likes you. And Naruto turns his head to Hinata and she quickly broke eye, to eye contact. And Naruto thought she's like, he's like, oh, yeah, she, she I'd actually like me. <laughs> so the day went on and don't think I'm forgetting your guys' question. The question for this video is what was the first Jinchuriki that Akatsuki captured? And I'll even give you a hint. It is not the first tales. So yeah. So as the day went on, the day went on without much issue, but by the end of their lunch break, Iruka came into class and told everyone that they'll be having a little physical test so they can track everyone's growth as they develop in the academy. So everyone, they're excited, they finally get to do ninja stuff. So they quickly line up at the door and Iruka leads them outside and outside they already have prepared an obstacle course, a bunch of wooden poles and Iruka starts to explain everything. So first they'll do the obstacle course, he'll time everyone and then they'll do, um, they'll balance on wooden poles to check, to test their, well, how well they are at balancing and finally a sparring match. So everyone there are excited out of their minds. So they qu they quickly rush over to the obstacle course and everyone rushes through with Iruka trying to keep track of everyone. And finally after that they have wooden poles that they stuck into the ground that everyone would climb up on and have to stand on it with one leg. And here is them with time how long they could stay balanced. And so far Naruto is doing really well because just just having Venom has increased Naruto's like physical strength and stuff like that passively. Now, when it came to the uh, sparring matches, Iruka, how he would pair everyone together is they would draw sticks from a cup and people with matching lengths would be put together. And just like in canon, Naruto is paired up with Sasuke, so let's not waste any time and go right to their fight. So as Naruto and Sasuke are facing each other, Venom says, Let's see how you fear against someone your own age without me, and remember everything I've taught you. And Naruto nodded, then Iruka started the match, and Naruto and Sasuke ran towards each other, and started going blow for blow in a taijutsu bout. But Naruto got a, a good hit in, and this sent Sasuke back a bit, and everyone was surprised at how even of a match this was. Even some of Sasuke's diehard fangirls were impressed, and Naruto's abilities, and Sasuke as well, obviously. And he smiled and said, okay, this is starting to get fun. So the two of them start going at it again, Sasuke getting a few hit in and so is Naruto. And Venom then spoke to Naruto and said, remember your greatest asset. And Naruto then nodded and he jumped back and everyone was wondering like what Naruto was planning to do. And Naruto put his hands together like he was forming a jutsu and everyone's eyes widened like a first year academy student who knows a jutsu? This isn't possible. This shouldn't be possible. Well, Naruto wasn't doing a jutsu, but focusing his chakra into his feet, which he learned with the help from Venom, you know, because Venom would tell Naruto to actually go out of his way to learn stuff, like learning from scrolls, and Naruto would be pretty good at chakra control. So Naruto looked at Sasuke and said, I've been training almost my entire life. I won't lose. And Naruto dashed at Sasuke really fast, faster than he could react, and punched him repeatedly over and over, with Sasuke using his arms to block Naruto's onslaught of attacks, but Naruto kept making him step further back closer and closer until he stepped out of the arena, giving Naruto the win. And everyone cheered for Naruto, 
every single fangirl was cheering. That fight was amazing. Of course they wanted Sasuke to win, but Naruto showed amazing abilities and they can't deny it. So both Naruto and Sasuke returned to the crowd and when Naruto was just standing up, Sakura, Sakura walked up to him and said, that fight was pretty cool I guess, and she walked off. And Naruto raised an eyebrow and Venom said, just take the win kid, girls like that never tell the truth. So as time went on, Naruto would become good friends with almost everyone in the academy, except Kiba, who's, who like, who named himself as Naruto's true rival, but everyone knows Kiba's not doing anything against Naruto. <laughs> so four years later, and we are at the graduation exams. These exams were the same as in canon where you would just do a clone jutsu, but uh, Sasuke, he wanted more than that. He wanted to fight Naruto for the role of Rookie of the Year. And Iruka saw that their grades and uh, physical scores were pretty close to each other. So, you know, why not? So Iruka prepared the two, the two to have their rematch, which Sasuke has been preparing for for the past couple years. And before this match, Venom told Naruto, he shouldn't underestimate Sasuke, because while they were busy getting friendly with everyone else, he's been training. But Naruto said, don't sweat it, it'll be, like, I'll be able to handle it myself. So the match begins and Sasuke infuses chakra into his feet, just like Naruto did all those years ago, and Naruto's eyes widen and he gets punched across the face without expecting it. But Sasuke wasn't done. And he said to Naruto, I found an even more clever way to use this ability you showed me. And Sasuke covered his fist in his chakra, and this chakra turned into fire. Sasuke ran up to Naruto and started punching him in the gut, burning a hole in Naruto's shirt. But when Sasuke got back, he realized Naruto's skin took zero damage. There wasn't any signs of burns. And Naruto looked at Sasuke and said, Good thing I healed pretty fast. Then Naruto weaved hand signs and said, Win style, win bullet. And Sasuke easily dodged this by jumping up in the air. But since he was in the air, Naruto had the perfect shot at him. Like, Naruto's hand was covered in Venom's tendrils. And he punched towards Sasuke, and Naruto's hands extended all the way, punching Sasuke across the face, and he fell to the ground. And Iruka, who was the like only one on the sidelines since this was a secluded area for the fight, he was baffled by what he just saw. And Sasuke got up and said, I knew you were holding out on me. Fire style, multi-fireball jutsu. And, Sa and Sasuke shot out multiple massive fireballs, and Naruto dodged the first two, but Sasuke set it up perfectly, and the third one hit Naruto head on. And Venom tried protecting him, but it did damage to both of them, since, you know, fire was one of Venom's few weaknesses. But they recovered pretty quickly and were back on the offensive, and Venom said, let's show this kid a portion of our strength. And Naruto smirked and covered his hands with uh, Venom's tendrils, and Naruto ran over to Sasuke, who had both his arms covered in fire and started fighting against Naruto, who was trying to end this quickly because of this fire. So Naruto used his black tendrils and swiped at Sasuke's legs, knocking him over. And Naruto held a fist over Sasuke, which had Venom's like goop all over it, making Naruto's fist massive, like four times its regular size. And Sasuke said, Oh, whatever, I forfeit. And Iruka, he's he, like he was so caught up in the battle, he didn't even hear Sasuke say it. So Sasuke had to repeat it. He's like, I forfeit. And Iruka is like, Oh, oh, sorry, uh, Naruto Uzumaki wins. And with that, Naruto is assigned the rookie of the year. It was a close fight, but hey, it was a good one. And Sasuke, he was a good sport about it. So they returned to the classroom, and Iruka broke the news to everyone that Naruto won. And of course, the fangirls were sad, but Naruto, he, he's built different. <laughs> so uh, after this, uh, Iruka, he says he needs to get all the paperwork together and get the list from the Hokage himself for what for the teams that everyone's going to be on. So he tells them to return the next day.
So as instructed, all the academy students return the next day to because they're going to be assigned on their teams. So when Erika, he comes into the class and he has the list ready and starts calling off the team names, going through all of them, then he finally reaches team seven, which is Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura, and their joining sensei is going to be Kakashi. And hearing this, you know, Sakura, she was like, this is an actually pretty good team. Like the strongest kid in the grade and the most handsome, you know, being uh, Sasuke, like she literally, she can't lose. <laughs> So after this, you know, after her argument with uh, Eno, Eno being like, oh, that's not fair. You got both the best guys in the class, but whatever. Um, uh, Eno's team, their Joni and Sensei arrive, like Asuma and Kurenai. They arrive for their teams, uh, Team 10 and Team 8, and take them to, I don't know, wherever they're going to train or something. And meanwhile, Team 7, they're waiting in the classroom for Kakashi. And they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And a good hour goes past when Kakashi finally decides to arrive. And when he gets to class, he can already see how irritated everyone in there is. So he doesn't even try to make an excuse. He's like, I, I, like he was going to say, I'm sorry, but he's like, okay, just, just meet me on the roofs. We're going to start or we're going to start off there. So everyone, they follow him upstairs to the rooftops and uh, he has them sit down and then Iruka tells them, uh, how about you guys introduce yourselves? Tell me your first and last names and your likes, dislikes and goals for the future. So Sasuke goes first and he's still his emo self, but he's been hang hanging out with Naruto. So it's not as much as in canon, but it's definitely still there. So he says, my name, he says, my name is Sasuke Uchiha. My likes and dislikes aren't at all important, but my goal is to avenge my clan, you know, in that deep, ominous voice. And hearing this immediately worried Kakashi because he knows the route, like the route of revenge, it never amounts to anything. But then Sakura goes and she says, well, my name is Sakura Haruno. I like a certain someone <laughs> and I hate Ino. Always getting in my damn way. <sighs> Anyways, my goal in life is to make my father proud and hopefully have a good husband. And finally, Naruto, he says, My name is Naruto Uzumaki and I like ramen, training, nothing special. I, I dislike high frequency sounds from 4 to 6 hertz. And everyone was like, w w what is even a hertz? Well, I meant to say kilohertz, but yeah, they're like, like bro, why so specific? Anyways. And Naruto just says, uh, never mind. My goal is to help one of my good friends out. Now, Kakashi is thinking he has his work cut out for him because this team isn't at all perfect. But he gets up and says, well, that was informative. Anyways, I want you all uh, to meet me at the training grounds tomorrow. Oh, and also don't eat anything before because, you know, he says they'll get sick or just comes up with some random ass excuse. And then Kakashi poofs into smoke. So Team 7, after that, they just return home and stay there until the next day. So the next day would roll around and Naruto, as soon as he wakes up, he just immediately gets something to eat because Kakashi doesn't care about what Kakashi said about not eating. But he's hungry. So Naruto, he has a bowl of ramen and then he heads out to the training grounds. And when he arrives, he's the first one there, actually. So he's waiting and about five minutes later, Sasuke arrives, then Sakura, and then they're just sitting there waiting even more for this man Kakashi to arrive. Like, what is he doing? But soon enough, Kakashi arrives and Naruto says to him, Kakashi sensei, like, can you just be on time for once? And Kakashi's like, well, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to walk all the way around. Then another one crossed my path, so I had to walk all, you know, just normal everyday things. And Naruto is looking at him like, bro, no one's buying it. So anyways, Kakashi, he starts to explain the bell test. And what they have to do is uh, two members of this team have to grab the bells. And the one who doesn't would have to return to the academy. And Naruto, he's pretty smart and already this whole thing doesn't doesn't even make any sense. He's like, a, a, what? How can one person, well, he's saying this in, in his head. How can 
one person returned to the academy where they need all three academy students and a Jonin sensei to be considered a team. That just doesn't make sense. So he's thinking there must be something else to this, but he can't really think about it as much because Kakashi, he says begin, and soon Naruto and Sasuke, they rush Kakashi, running in different directions, like they both already knew what the other was going to do. And Kakashi, this entire time, he's still reading Ichi Ichi Paradise, and they run up behind him, and in unison, they jump to kick Kakashi, but Kakashi just steps out of the way and punched at the two and but Venom he managed to drag Naruto to the ground but Sasuke got punched right in the face. Naruto jumps back and says to Venom, I've been doing all the work lately, how about you do something for once? And Venom said, not like I just saved you but okay. And Naruto, his body started to become surrounded in this black goop. And Naruto, he grew like three feet, towering over Kakashi. He then punched at Kakashi, who blocked it with his arms, but this sent him flying back into the forest. And Sakura was like standing there frozen, not knowing what to do. But she saw Sasuke struggling to get up, so she ran over to help him up. And she started feeling around um, in her kunai pouch and took out a food pill and gave it to Sasuke. And Sasuke, he shot up almost immediately and thanked Sakura. Meanwhile, Naruto's arm turned into a whip and started slashing through the trees and grabbed Kakashi. And Naruto pulled him towards them and he says, Well, it seems like that's about it, Kakashi-sensei. And he slams him into the ground, but Kakashi poofs into smoke. And Naruto, he's looking around trying to see where he's gonna come out from. But that's when Naruto hears in the distance screams coming from... Uh, he thinks he hears Sakura. So Naruto, he quickly rushes over to where like he was last. And he sees Sakura tied up to a tree. While Sasuke, he's looking around trying to find Kakashi also. So soon enough, Kakashi, he jumps out and tries to like put Naruto in a chokehold but Naruto it's like he grew another arm and punched Kakashi off of him and then Naruto turned around and says you're finally in the open now let's finish this Sasuke and Sasuke he weaved hand signs for a fireball and shot it but of course Kakashi dodged and that's what Naruto was expecting so he got behind him and then slammed him into the ground and Kakashi coughed up blood and he was holding his stomach and he tried rolling out of the way but Naruto grabbed him and wrapped him around in his tendrils so he was not going anywhere and that was the match so Naruto he tied Kakashi up to the stumps while they had lunch in his face and Kakashi he couldn't be any prouder of his team the team it does need some work with uh, teamwork especially incorporating uh, Sakura but Naruto and Sasuke seem to have a pretty strong bond, so he doesn't have to worry about any of that. Now, after this, it's gonna be sort of like a montage with Team 7 going on a bunch of D rank missions trying to fill up their quotas. And, you know, they're doing, they're picking up trash, they're helping old ladies cross the road, they're catching cats. All of this, it's cool and all, but it isn't testing them as like real ninjas. So Team 7, they tell Kakashi that, yo, stop giving us these bum ass missions. Can we get something actually decent where we go outside of the village? So Kakashi, uh, when they go to get their next mission, he mentions this to uh, Hirazen, and he thought Hirazen would be like, nah, you need more D ranks. But Hirazen is surprisingly okay with the idea. Like, he doesn't even think twice. He's like, yeah, I kind of expected this. So, I've prepared this mission for you guys. It is an escort mission to bring a bridge builder to the Land of Waves. And Team 7, they're pretty excited. For once, they get to go outside of the village. So the next day rolls around and everyone meets at the village gates and they see Tazuna for the first time. And Tazuna, he's like, he's thinking to himself, are these damn kids like escorting me? This isn't what I paid for. But Tazuna, he's, he's trying to keep it cool, you know, be respectful because he knows he's already lying. So he's not trying to bring up any of that. So he, you know, he greets the team and they start going to the land of waves. 
So they're walking along and not far from the village, they come across a puddle and you might be wondering, like, a puddle? What's wrong with a puddle? Well, it's been the dry season for the past month now, so there has been no raining. So a puddle just in the middle of the road should not be a thing. So this raid raised major red flags for Kakashi and Naruto since they were the main ones who realized it, while the others weren't really paying attention. So as they walk past it, um, two brothers jump out of this puddle with like blades of laced with poison and they go after Tazuna. But Sasuke, he stepped in the way and he used a fire burst to block the demon brother's blade. And Naruto, he quickly turned his arm into a tendril and wrapped it around the brothers so they couldn't move. And that was done. That was it. And so Naruto, while they have them wrapped up, Kakashi, he starts interrogating them, asking them why they come after the uh, bridge builder, or who sent them, stuff like that. But the demon brothers were not saying anything. So Kakashi, he had to, he had to go to extreme measures, you can call it that. So he starts using his kunai and cutting along their arms, be like, I'll stop. All you have to do is tell me who you work for. And it didn't take long for them to break and tell them everything that, um, you know, Gato, he made them go after the bridge builder and that there's some more ninjas up the road from, from here that are going to ambush them. So, you know, be on the lookout. And Kakashi, he's like, well, good. And then he cuts both their heads off because they have a bounty and he's trying to collect that. So, yeah, after doing that, he seals them up in a scroll for later when he's going to, you know, uh, catch the bounty. And they continue on further down the road. And then it starts to get like a heavy mist surrounds them. And Tazuna, like he was trying to tell them that you know, they shouldn't worry about anything. Mists like this are normal in these parts of town. But Kakashi, he didn't feel, he didn't, this was off, like this didn't feel normal, this didn't feel like some natural mist. Because Kakashi, he, well he didn't know it, but what he was picking up on is that there was chakra in the mist itself. Because that's how Zabaza, like has it spread. He uh, infuses his chakra in this mist to have it spread around them, so it's literally barely visible. So Kakashi... Um, he waits there and then he starts to hear this swishing sound coming through the air and he yelled duck and everyone dropped to the ground except Naruto who had his arms covered in the black goop and grabbed the blade and Zabuza he landed on a tree branch and saw Naruto holding his blade and said how could a damn leaf genin manage to grab it kid give it here and Naruto smiled and said, okay, if you said so. And Naruto threw it at Zabaza at blinding speed. Zabaza, he barely had time to jump out of the way. And the blade cut right through the tree he was on. And it went flying off into a lake. And Zabaza, he gritted his teeth and said, oh, you damn brat, you pay for that. Water style, water dragon jutsu. And it went straight for Naruto, but another water dragon canceled it out. And Zabaza looked into Kakashi's eyes and said, So, I have to deal with the copy ninja as well. Ugh, Haku, seems like you are right. I do need your help. And from the forest came a masked ninja. This, you know, uh, he's called Haku. So Zabaza and Kakashi start to go at it. But without, without his blade, Zabaza was losing... Well, not by much, but Kakashi, he wouldn't be trapped in that water prison. So Haku decided to jump in when the fight was going a lot in Kakashi's favor. But Naruto and the others stopped him in his tracks. So with this, Haku used um, his secret technique, the demon ice mirrors, trapping Naruto and Sasuke. And, you know, they almost immediately knew what to do. They just glanced at each other, you know, smirked a bit and ran at the mirrors. And Sasuke used his fire punching and Naruto had venom wrapped around his arm and they both punched through the mirrors with ease. And Haku, she was, he, he, he was shocked that they managed to get through. And Haku chased after them 
But Naruto restrained him with his tendril and Sasuke started hitting her, hitting, oh my god, hitting him with a flurry, with a flurry of punches and fire attacks and knocking Haku out. Jeez, bro, I need to get those prana. <laughs> so meanwhile, this is happening. Kakashi is still fighting Zabuza and Kakashi must have thought Zabuza was Rin for a second because he shoved a Chidori through his chest. Okay, bad joke. And with Team 7 uh, taking care of like Zabaza and Haku, they uh, returned to the they returned to Tazana and then he guided them to the land of waves. And they you know they still have Haku in tow and they'll just keep Haku tied up until they get back to the leaf to uh, lock him up. So Tazana, he has one of his boater fisherman friends, you know, carry them over to the land of waves because there's a lake separating it from where they were. So once they arrive there, Tazana, he brings them to his house and they there they meet his daughter, his uh, grandson, all that good stuff. And while they were eating, actually, Inari, he comes in and says, You nobody ninjas won't stand a chance against Gato. And his mom is like, Inari, that's enough. But Naruto, he turned to his mom and said, Nah, it's fine. I'll deal with it. So Naruto, he gets up and walks over to Inari, who's you know starting to sweat at this point. And Naruto leaned over and said, Say that to my face. And Venom covered Naruto's head and Inari froze for a second but bolted upstairs screaming. And Naruto, he went back uh, to eating while Sakura, she said, Naruto, you didn't have to do that. But Naruto, he just shrugged and Venom said to him, that kid would make a good snack. But Naruto, he's like, D don't even think about it, bruh. So after dinner, Tazuna shows Team 7 the different guest rooms where they can stay for their time in, in the Land of Waves. So Kakashi, he does teach Team 7 some stuff like wall walking and tree walking. Nothing Naruto doesn't know, but still it's, it's useful. Maybe Kakashi gives Naruto a few good tips, but honestly, Naruto, he has nothing to learn from Kakashi right now. So after, like, as they're getting close to the bridge completing, like, Naruto and the rest of Team 7, they're taking turns patrolling the bridge, but one day, while the bridge is almost to completion, a giant ship filled with a bunch of mercenaries, like, hundreds of thousands of mercenaries armed with swords, spears, anything sharp, really. And they all get onto the bridge, and Gato, he stands out in front of all of them. And he says, it seems like that boy and his master failed. <laughs> Too bad. Boys, take care of him. And the men rush at Team 7, who take out their uh, kunai and start fighting black... F what? <laughs> start fighting back, blocking, deflecting, and killing a bunch of mercenaries as they come. And then Sasuke, he shouts out for every one of them to stand back and he turns to Naruto and he says, back me up on this one. And Naruto nods and they both do a bunch of hand signs and says, combination jutsu, rising flame, which is a mixture of great breakthrough and fire dragon flame bullet. You know, they both combine to create this sort of vortex of fire. This arose every single person there. And when the jutsu is finished, Gato was just standing there dumbfounded. He tried running away, but Kakashi, he caught up with him easily. It, like, he wasn't going to go anywhere. And he grabs him by the neck, and Gato, he starts squirming, saying, Let me go, let me go! But Kakashi said, I want to know where you keep your cash secured. And Gato laughed and said, Ha! Huh, like I'll ever tell you that! And spits on Kakashi's face. And Kakashi, he tightens his grip around Gato's neck, making it impossible for him to breathe. And before he passed out, Gato is like, Okay, okay, there's a cave along the river. I store everything there. Please, just let me live. And Kakashi is like, good. Then snaps his neck and throws him off the bridge. Following this, Kakashi, he recovers all of Gato's money and gave it to Tazuna, who was temporarily the head of the village, and he used this to start rebuilding um, the village from the ground up. And it's way easier because of the great Naruto bridge. Like they can go to and from major like trading areas to get a bunch of supplies. 
it everything is just really really going good for the land of waves right now and with that team seven make sure they have haku in tow and return to the leaf village and when they arrive they of course put haku in a jail cell and when they go to hirizen's office kakashi he makes it clear that wasn't a c rank mission <laughs> that was that was a b rank at least probably even a rank and Hirazen, he's hearing everything that happened and all the things that Naruto and Sasuke did and he's impressed by their growth. Like they are honestly like low Joni level right now. Well, Sasuke is. Naruto, he's past Joni a very long time ago. <laughs> so uh, after this, Kaka uh, not Kakashi, Hirazen, he of course pays them well because this was a higher ranked mission. And then Team 7, they get to go home for a while, but it doesn't last long because Kakashi, he, um, he brings them to the training ground once again and there he tells them about the tuning exams and how he wants them to participate, but it's up to their, uh, it's like their choice in the end of it, but none of them disagree, so uh, they all enter the tuning exams. And before, like, before they all, like, went their separate ways, Sakura, she went up to Naruto and she asked him, like, Hey, Naruto, I, I wanted to ask, could you help me train? It's obvious I dragged the group down, so please train me. And she's on her knees at this point. And Naruto, he just shrugs and says, Sure, I don't have a problem with it. Yo, Sasuke, you want to train too? And Sasuke, he's thinking for it for a second and then he's like, you know what, sure. So all of Team 7 trains together and Naruto shows them no mercy. They have to dodge um, him attacking them. They have to run laps around the Leaf Village multiple times a day. And the Leaf Village isn't small. Actually, I just searched it up. I spent a good like 15 minutes looking it up. And the Leaf Village is way bigger than I thought. And I think it's way bigger than like you guys think as well. Like, I don't know. But it is over 300 square kilometers. And if you're like me, that means nothing to you. But like to put that into perspective, it would take 700 hours to walk around it without stopping. And I lowballed all the numbers. Like, I think I searched it up, it was like 313 square kilometers. I rounded it down to 300. So, I don't know if I did some wrong calculations, but when Kakashi is telling them he lost his path and had to go the long way, yo, he wasn't kidding. Like, he meant the long way because it would take hours. So, yeah, Naruto's trained them all well just in time for the tuning exams. And on that day, Team 7, they go to the uh, academy. And once they're there, the door is blocked by all the uh, all the uh, Genin trying to get in for the exams. But uh, Sasuke, he sees right through the Genjutsu. It isn't even a problem for Sasuke and Sakura as well. But, you know, Naruto, he was the one, like, they had to tell Naruto that it was actually a Genjutsu. So after passing that group of people, they go upstairs and of course meet with um, Team Guy. This is, you know, Guy, Tenten, and Lee. And Lee asks Naruto for a fight. But Naruto, he says, you know, maybe when they go into the exams, um, they can fight there. And Lee, he's like, eh, okay, all right, that makes sense. You know, you don't want to relieve, re re reveal um, all of your tricks right here and right now. So. They all enter the room, and as soon as they walk in, everyone there is staring them down. And Sakura, she's feeling uncomfortable, and she like tries to go to a side where you know they're out of the way. And Team Seven, they're just sitting there waiting. And soon enough, Ibiki and his like, all the other ninjas working with him, they all come out and tell everyone to you know take a seat um, for this stage of the exams. And Ibiki starts explaining it that this that they will be given a paper with nine questions and the tenth question will be given after but for the written part there should be no cheating and if they're caught cheating they will be kicked out along with their entire team you know and he shows them that they're going to have invigilators sitting among them just to keep not among them like along the sides just to keep watching and make sure that none of them are cheating so Ibiki, he has his like, I don't know what they are like, his friends? 
you know, the, the other invigilators in the exam, they come through and handle all the papers and then he gives them an hour and says start. And with that, Naruto, he's actually doing pretty good without having to cheat in any way, shape or form. While others, they're being really clever. And I think I mentioned this in another what if, but this is one of my favorite scenes from the OG Naruto. It's not any huge fight. It's not any of that. It's just like showing how people can use their powers in like really like unique ways and how they are actually like ninjas. They can, you know, steal um, intel and different things like that. So after the hour runs up, um, Ibiki, he like he's already gotten rid of a few teams by now. And he tells them for the 10th question, they can either stay and answer it or if they get it wrong, they will be barred from taking the tuning exams ever again, meaning they will be stuck at the level of Genin. And everyone hearing this, this is starting to weigh on their conscience because it's not just them, it's if one person gets it wrong, their entire team is barred. So like one person, they would give up, they not give up, but they would say like, I don't wanna do this. So them and their entire team have to go and like almost like 20% of the original class is left. So after all the weaklings, they like walk out, Ibiki, he's like, all right, now that we have everyone who's serious in here, you all pass. And everyone is like, wait, what? We, we passed, but we didn't even get the question yet. And Ibiki, he's saying, oh, it was just some mental mind games. There was no 10th question. He just wanted to know who would like risk it all to become a tuning and they all demonstrated that so they get to move on and as the is finishing explaining it um uncle she busts through the window and sends glass shards flying all over the room and she says all right maggots meet me over to the forest of death now the last one there i'll eliminate and everyone they get moving while ibiki he talks to uncle and says Anko, in every single what if, why can't you just take the door? <laughs> and Ibiki, he just takes his stuff and says, whatever. So Anko, she jumps back through the window and uh, catches up with everyone on their way over to the forest of death. And when she finally arrives with them, she starts to also explain um, this portion of the tuning exams. She says that these forests are filled with man-eating beasts, like 20, not 20, but like 10 times the size of like normal animals anywhere else in the ninja world. Like a, she's using her hands like a bear is like, you know, yay high in the forest. It's taller than you. So that's what you need to be expecting. And hearing this, some people, they start freaking out and hearing that killing is allowed some people they're like no 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 i want to go home i want to see my mommy so they all leave and uh uncle she's like all right everyone go get your scrolls off in those tents and also sign this waiver you know we can't be liable for any deaths so <laughs> uncle so yeah uncle has everyone pick their scrolls team seven gets a uh heaven scroll you know what yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> heaven or Earth, it really doesn't matter. So Team 7 gets a Heaven Scroll and they go to their assigned gate and wait for Anko's instructions to go. And as soon as they get it, they run into the Forest of Death looking for their first group. And Naruto, he came up with the idea that they could cover more ground if they spread out. And Sasuke, he said, that's a dumb idea. Someone could sneak up on us and Naruto, he just said, stay with Sakura, I'll look around. And Sasuke, he's trying to tell Naruto to come back, but it was too late and he just continued on without him. So after half an hour of searching, you know, they come up empty handed. So Sasuke and Sakura, they took a quick break on a tree branch, but that's when Sasuke got wrapped up by a snake and this snake, its head turned into a person's and said, Seems I've found you, Sasuke. And he looked up at Orochimaru and said, who, who the hell are you? And he started fighting, trying to get loose, and Orochimaru said, Calm down, this will make you stronger. And Orochimaru held open his mouth and a needle fell out. 
But Sasuke, he released flame release like from his chakra points all over his body and got free. And Orochimaru, his full body formed and he grabbed the needle. And uh, Orochimaru, he looked annoyed. He was ready to fight Sasuke. But Sakura came from behind him and put Orochimaru in a chokehold. Orochimaru, he simply ripped her arms off of him and slammed her into a tree branch. And he looked to Sasuke and said, Now that that nuisance was taken care of, time to make you my perfect vessel. And Sasuke, he quickly threw kunai, but when it hit Orochimaru, his body burst into a bunch of snakes. And all these tiny snakes slithered over to uh, Sasuke. And he tried jumping into the air to avoid them. But they followed him into the air and they quickly turned into uh, Orochimaru's body, like reforming into him. And he stabbed the needle right into Sasuke's arms, like right into a vein. And when they landed, Orochimaru smirked and said, Enjoy your newfound power. So we switched to Naruto, who has been searching for a team. And that's when he stumbles across Team Dosu. And Naruto, he made sure to be stealthy and then he pounced at first attacking Kin, that's like the, the female of the group, and punched her into the ground. And Dosu and Zaku, they turned around angry and they both sent a sound based attack at Naruto. And Naruto, he thought he could tank this, but the sound wave started hurting Naruto and began forcing Venom out of his body. But, you know, he's trying to, like both of them are trying to hold on. And Dosu saw this black thing coming out of Naruto and their attacks seemed to be effective so he turned to Zaku and said, Don't let up, we almost got him. Naruto fell to his knees exhausted and when Venom was going to fully separate from Naruto, someone came in from the forest and yelled, Leaf Hurricane! and sidekicked Dosu and Zaku. Naruto, he fell to his knees and, well, he fell on the ground because he was already on his knees, but yeah, he fell over and started breathing heavily and said, Venom, you still there? And after a few seconds of silence, he started hearing a groan and Venom said, yeah, let's not do that again. So Naruto, he looks up and sees um, Lee going up against Team Dosu, so he rushes in and says, win style, great breakthrough. And this sent Dosu flying while Zaku was, you know, he was already being taken care of by Lee. So he then uh, ran up and punched Dosu around just to make sure he's not getting up anytime soon. So he returned to Lee and thanked him for obviously saving him. And Lee said, remember, you owe me that fight. Can't have you being killed now, can I? And Naruto, he smiled and then jumped off to try and find his team. And then he finally comes across Sakura by a cave and there she is like she's trying to like nurse Sasuke back to health because he's completely passed out at this point. So Naruto when he looked over Sasuke he felt like he could feel something within Sasuke but he doesn't know what it is. So he just told Sakura well he didn't well he didn't tell Sakura to carry him he carried Sasuke um, because they got the scroll they needed, so they just went to the um, mansion at the center of the forest. And when they do, they tell Kakashi about um, the Orochimaru situation. And Sakura thought he had put some sort of seal on him. But when he went to check, there wasn't any seal. He couldn't find anything. So Kakashi just took him to the hospital to rest up. And back with Team 7, um, they, they, well, they wait around for all the other teams to arrive. But soon enough, they all do, and Hirazen, um escorts them into this massive room. It's like there's viewing areas on the wall. It's kind of like it's some fighting arena. So Hirazen, he starts to explain that they didn't expect this many people to pass. So they need to dwindle the numbers down, and the best way to do that is with some preliminary exams. And uh, the matchups for this are pretty similar to canon. Naruto is up against Kiba. And when Kiba hears this matchup, he has been waiting his entire life for this fight. Finally, he can show the entire Konoha 12 who's the strongest. And when the match started, Naruto slams him into a wall. Moving on, 
Eno versus Sakura goes completely different. You know, I love my girl Eno, but Sakura beats her with um, like the increased strength and stamina from all of Naruto's training. So the match goes in her favor and all the rest go pretty similar to canon. Well, except Sasuke since he's kind of in the hospital right now. So he'd automatically forfeit from his match. But Hiruzen is realizing like he has an extra person due to Sakura winning. So they don't have an even number and he's trying to come up with uh, some way maybe he has another round and the winner moves on. But Naruto chimes in and he says, well, I wouldn't have any problem beating up two people. I'm going up against Neji, why not throw in hmm, Gara as well? And uh, uh, Hiruzen, he's looking to the other Jonians and he's like, can, can we do that? And they're thinking, I was like, well, there's no rule against it, so... And Hiruzen, he was like, no, that would be too much for you. Like, safety, blah, 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 blah. But Naruto, he's like, safety... I just saw some people get murked in the forest. Don't talk to me about safety. And here is Eni's like, oh, all right, you have a point. Whatever, Naruto, you're going up against Neji and Gara. And hearing this, Neji, he's like, what the like the nerve that Naruto has because he doesn't respect their fight. While Gara, he's just thinking Naruto is just dumb. So after this, they get their one month training period to. Um, work on well whatever they need to but during this time Naruto he meets Jiraiya as well and of course they meet at the bath bath houses where Jiraiya he's trying to take a quick peek but Naruto he stops him and Jiraiya's like come on kid I'm trying to get some research but of course Naruto doesn't let it happen and after getting to know Jiraiya a little bit no more he realizes that he's a uh, legendary Sani Jiraiya like Naruto he doesn't know why he didn't realize it sooner and Jiraiya he starts telling Naruto um, that he wants to teach him a few tricks of the trade so they go off to the same like waterfall area and Jiraiya, he starts off with the summoning jutsu and Naruto, he learns this easily. Like, it takes him one try to summon the massive toad Gamabunta. So Jiraiya, he's like, alright, you think you're a pro now, huh? Alright, try this. And Jiraiya, he shows Naruto the Rasengan. And this jutsu is far, is really complex. Even Naruto, he can't just learn it off, like, just like that. So Jiraiya, he had to break down the steps, you know, do the same balloon and then a rubber ball and then, um, you know, stage Naruto up. And finally, Naruto, he can do the Rasengan after um, about three weeks because he wasn't training nearly as hard as he was in canon because this is just a side thing to Naruto. So he does it for three weeks and Naruto can do the Rasengan, but he needs, um, he needs one of his hands to do it. So after this, finally the third stage of the Chunin exams is right around the corner and before going, Naruto decides to get a quick wardrobe change and this time Naruto's whole suit just trade the orange for black and the blue for white. Naruto goes with the full Venom look and just in time for the third stage. So Naruto, he enters the massive arena and all the villagers are around cheering um, for like, well, whoever they're cheering for. And Naruto, he's just standing there taking it all in. And um, Hiruzen, he starts to speak, telling them that this fight will be incredible and start listing off all the competitors and the pairings. So first up is going to be the first fight like this in history, in Chunin exam history. Naruto versus Neji and Gara, a 2v1. So everyone is wondering what this kid was thinking accepting this, but it's the demon, so they should just sit back, relax, and enjoy the beatdown. The Proctor starts the match and Neji was the first to rush at Naruto and he starts hitting him with a bunch of palm strikes and jabs to his chakra points and Naruto he was dodging them all pretty well and Neji he backed off and said I'll give you this once to surrender because you're not winning and Naruto he was like mm, I'll pass and Neji he just smirks and says alright your funeral 
8 trigrams, 64 palms, and he gets into this low stance and then rushes at Naruto saying 2 palms, 4 palms, 8 palms, you know, you know, and then he ends up by saying 8 trigrams, 64 palms. And Neji strikes all of Naruto's chakra points, cutting off the circulation to his whole body. And Naruto's body just fell over limp, and the crowd started cheering, and the proctor, he ran over to make sure that Naruto was actually out. And the proctor, um, he sees Naruto's eyes open, and he quickly, like, jumps back. And Naruto's body, now fully recovered with venom, rushed Neji. And Naruto himself started using the gentle fist technique and striking a couple of Neji's own chakra points. And Neji, he got some space between them and held his arm and said, oh, I hate my mic. He held his arm and said, how are you doing this? You're not a Hyuga? And Naruto said, Hyuga or not, let's just say I have a pretty good memory. And Neji gets sucker punched in the stomach and Venom kneed him in the chin, causing Neji to go flying in the air then slam back into the ground. And Naruto, he was now ready to take on Gara. But Neji, bro, he got back up and said, I will not lose to you. And he shouted, rotation. And Neji started spinning around, creating his own barrier. And Tenten is in the crowd looking over, looking over to the other Genin and said, nothing can break through Neji's defense. Naruto is beat at this point. And as she says this, Naruto is still in his Venom suit and he runs over and punches the rotation, breaking it instantly and sending Neji flying into the arena walls. And this completely knocked him out. Ten Ten's jaw dropped and the other Genin, they couldn't help but laugh a bit because of how sure she was of like Neji winning. But Naruto's fight wasn't over yet because Gara was observing this entire time and he was ready to attack. He lifted both his arms and created a massive wave of sand and slammed it into Naruto, pushing him across the entire arena. And the sand, it started covering Naruto's body and the Genin, like from the preliminary exams, they thought back to Lee's fight and they knew what was going to come next. Like they were shouting, trying to get the guy to stop the fight. But Gara extended his arms and said, Sand Coffin. And he made a fist and the sand crushed everything in it. And Gara, he was laughing, but he didn't see any blood. And from under him, Naruto punched through the ground and uppercutted Gara, sending him far, like flying into the air. And he landed back. And his sand armor started cracking and Naruto lifted his fist into the air in victory. And people started cheering for Naruto. Like, some of them may not like him, but this is entertaining. They can't lie about that. So, Gara, he was starting to go insane, and he said, Why don't you just die? And a massive explosion went off, sending Naruto flying back. And from the smoke, Gara's half, half Chicago state was standing there, and he was starting to go on a rampage, literally attacking people in the stands as well. So, um, Gara's, well, technically it's Jonin Sensei, he commenced the Konoha Crush and explosions from across the leaf, um, like different parts of the leaf started going off and Naruto, he was looking around and seeing everyone fall asleep and Gara was like trying to run away with, um, his siblings. So meanwhile, all this is going on, um, Hirazen, he's looking around trying to wonder what is happening and Orochimaru, who's disguised as the Kazekage, who's right next to him, he attacks Hirazen and they go on the roof and the sound four creates this barrier so Hirazen cannot escape and he's forced to fight with Orochimaru. So at this time, Naruto, he had been following Gara and finally caught up to him and he and Sasuke managed to box Gara around until he turned into the full Shikaku state. And Naruto asked Venom like, what are we gonna do against this? What do we even have? And Venom, he had an idea. He went into Naruto's mindscape and walked up to the Ninetales cage and said, wake up you damn fox, for once the kid needs your help. And Kurama opened one of his eyes and said, I thought you said you had it. And Venom said, okay, okay, I guess I need your help. Just please, just some chakra would be nice. 
And Kurama, he closed his eyes, then a stream of chakra started flowing through Naruto, and Venom suit started covering him and began growing in size to the size of, like, the Shikaku. And Venom, he smiled and says, this is gonna be fun. He reached his hand back and punched Shikaku across the face, sending it flying up into the air and crashing down into the forest. Then Naruto's hand turned into a giant blade and Venom reached up and cut through Shikaku's neck. Venom started laughing, but while he was off guard, Shikaku's sand started connecting its head back and then wrapped it around um, Venom's leg and pulled it, making Naruto fall over. Well, Naruto and Venom, making them fall over. And Shikaku got up and said, I'll kill you for that, and started using wind bullets to hit Venom over and over. And he said, Kurama, a bit more chakra would be nice. It's not easy maintaining this suit when it's this massive. And Kurama in his case just rolled its eyes and started giving a bit more chakra, like 1% of his total, total chakra reserves. When before it was like 0.5%. So Venom slammed his hands together and created a shield and began pushing back against Shikaku's attacks. Once he got close enough, he slammed their shield in Shikaku's face and this woke Gara up and Shikaku looked down at his hands and it started like falling into piles of sand and he was screaming, no damn it, I can't go back, I just got out. And then a massive smoke cloud appeared and Gara's body started falling but Venom caught him and they started shrinking down to normal size. So after this, Naruto brought Gara over to his siblings and before they left, Tamari called out to Naruto and like said, you know, thanks, like thanks for saving Gara. And Naruto, he's just like, all in a day's work for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and ran off. And while Naruto was fighting Jiraiya, not Jiraiya, Kakashi and all the other Jonin, they took care of the San Shinobi that were left, and Hirazen, he unfortunately lost his life in a similar fashion to Kanon. So while all of this was happening, Sasuke, he was in the hospital, and when nightfall hit, he woke up, and Sasuke started screaming while these red spikes started shooting out of his chest, his arms, just all over his body. And some medical ninja ran in because they heard the screams and these spikes stab right through all of them. And Jonin appeared on, uh, on scene and from the smoke that was created from all of this, a red monster stepped out. This was carnage. It let out a monstrous scream and slaughtered every single person in its path and ran to the forest surrounding the leaf where Kabuto was lying in wait. And he did a weird series of hand signs and said, Symbiote Suppression Jutsu. And the uh, carnage receded back into Sasuke's body and he fell limp onto the ground. And Kabuto thought to himself, After spending so much time with, those, with this symbiote, Lord Orochimaru sure did develop some useful jutsu, especially in times like this. So Kabuto hoisted Sasuke over his shoulders and returned to Orochimaru's hideout. The next morning, top Jonin as well as Jonin senses were made aware of what happened last night and it said that a monster took over Sasuke's body and went on a killing spree. So they had no idea why but this all happened after um, his run-in with Orochimaru so that was their only lead. And when Naruto and Sasuke heard about this, they were ready to go after him, like to take care of him. But Kakashi made it clear that if it was Orochimaru, he was he has a literal like hundreds of hideouts. So finding the specific one is highly unlikely. And well, highly unlikely without any help, which they don't have. So Naruto he slammed his hands into a wall in just frustration as they were thinking of what to do. Jiraiya appeared next to the team and he said, the council has decided on the next Hokage. And Kakashi, he asked who it was and Jiraiya just simply say, Sonare, but he needs their help to look for her. And Kakashi, he thought about it, but almost immediately said, yeah, his team, they need some time to get their mind off things and this is the perfect thing. So Jiraiya gives them all some small pictures of Sonare, so when they start searching, 
they would go around showing these pictures to people asking if they've ever seen them around and for the most part most of them would say no but for once this bar that they went to the bartender he was like oh the legendary sucker yeah she came through here around a week ago and she left yesterday actually she said she was going up north to clear her debts in a town now finally with something to go off of they went to the nearest town up north and went to every bar and wouldn't you know it like they found one where sonate was playing a card game and obviously losing so when sonate saw the group of leaf ninjas there she was like oh, why are you all here well Drya he explained the news of like hirazen's death and the council has chosen sonate to be the next Lokage. And she shouted like, like hell, over my dead body. And Jiraiya, he tried cal calming Sonate down, but then Naruto, he chimed in and said, How about we make a deal? If I beat you in a fight, you come back to the village. And Sonate, she smirked and said, Well, what's in it for me? And Naruto, he pulled out his frog wallet thing, filled with money he made from the escort mission from like Land of Waves. And he said, I'll give you all of this. And Sonade said, and now that's a deal. Meet me outside, kid. But before Naruto walked out, Jiraiya said, like, what are, what are you doing? What's your plan here? And Naruto, he's just like, don't worry about it. If she's a legendary sucker, then remember, I'll win. So Naruto, he walks outside and sees Shizune trying to um, you know, talk uh, Sonade out of the situation. But at this point, she was already in, and she actually said, How about I throw this necklace in if I lose? And she's in a passed out because that's literally the opposite of what she was trying to get her to do. But Naruto, he's, all, he's like, Alright, let's go. And Sonata used a finger and touched the ground and cracked it, and Naruto fell in. And Sonata walked up, and she was smiling from ear to ear and said, Well, it seems like I win. But Naruto, he poofed into smoke and the real Naruto came from a tree and made a Rasengan and slammed it into Sonata's back, sending her spinning into a vendor stall. And Naruto, he stood there laughing the entire time. And Sonata not only had to become Okage, she also had to give up her grandfather's necklace and pay for the guy's stand she slammed into. In short, she's having a pretty normal day. So. They return to the leaf village with Sonade in tow, and when they finally arrive, they give her a brief, like, catch up on the Sasuke situation. Then Sonade began to think of, like, how to tackle it, and she came up with the Sasuke retrieval plan, or I don't know, the SR code, I don't know, just some technical name for it, but yeah, the Sasuke retrieval mission. This mission had multiple stages and different people helping out at each stage. Stage 1, of course, is finding Orochimaru's hideout. And this would be like really helpful with uh, Jiraiya's entire like spy network and stuff. Stage 2 is fighting through um, Orochimaru's men. Stage 3 is fighting Orochimaru himself. And Stage 4 is fighting and capturing Sasuke. So their plan began going into motion and over the time skip, Jiraiya had his network of spies began focusing their resources on locating Orochimaru, like sending out search parties of tracking ninjas. And remember, this is over the entirety of the time skip, so this takes oh, like three years to do. So once they finally find uh, Orochimaru's hideout, they send a messenger bird back to Sonade. And when she got it, she can finally put stage 2 into motion. But also, over these three years, Naruto was helping train all of the Konoha 12 because they need them to be strong enough to go against the Sound 4. And after the end of their training, Naruto gave them all something special uh, Venom had been working on. It's a tiny offspring compared to regular offsprings like Carnage who become a whole symbiote and has its own consciousness. These are really tiny and give them a portion of Venom strength so it would buff their strength and speed as well as giving them some of Venom's abilities like creating weapons and excellent memory so everyone was ready to go. And they went to the hideouts and immediately they were met by the Sound 4. 
and the Konoha 12, except for uh, Naruto, was left to take care of them. And as they went deeper into the hideout, Orochimaru himself came out to stop them. And at this point, it was Naruto, Sonade, and Jiraiya there. But remember, Orochimaru, he lost the use of his arms um, because of Hiruzen's sacrifice like during their whole fight. So, Sonade and Jiraiya are left to take care of Orochimaru, which honestly isn't as hard as before because... Um, well, they would be going up against Kabuto as well, but Sonade and Jiraiya would be taken care of both of them pretty easily. Then it came to Sasuke, and Naruto found him in this wide open room, which he thinks is like a training area. And Naruto, he sees Sasuke and says, Sasuke, we don't have to do this. We need your strength back in the village to fight against the Akatsuki. But Sasuke wasn't listening at all, at all, and he went into carnage mode, being covered in this blood red symbiote, and Venom said, Okay, this isn't good, it's a red one. And Naruto is like, come on, we came all this way, you can't be giving up now. Venom then got a bit more confident, and carnage rushed them and turns its hand into a sword, and started swiping at Venom, cutting into the suit, but Venom grabbed Carnage's shoulders and grew two more arms and started punching Carnage over and over until it threw spikes at Venom, causing them to back off. Venom then said, All right, no more playing around. Chroma, you're up. The Ninetales started to give Venom a lot of chakra. Like before, he started growing in size, but not as big as during the uh, Shikaku fight because, you know, they were underground and it wouldn't make much sense to grow that big. So they grew to the size of about like 10 feet and Venom started to change forms a bit and more resemble uh, the Ninetales. And he got on all fours and rushed Carnage who said, you're not the only one with special powers, father. And Sasuke's three Tomoe activated, making Carnage able to dodge Naruto, but so he thought. He had greatly underestimated Naruto's speed in this form and got slammed into a wall. And Venom said, Naruto, now! The Venom suit opened up and Naruto did a bunch of hand signs instead. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. This massive fireball was launched at Carnage, revealing Sasuke inside because this is one of Carnage's weaknesses, fire and sound. So Venom ripped Sasuke out, leaving the red group of Carnage just crawling around, trying to find a new host. But Venom picked it up and ate it. So a week later, Sasuke woke up in the hospital and from the corner of the room, someone said, look who's awake. And Sasuke looked over and saw Naruto, and he quickly sat up and said, Naruto, I'm sorry, whatever that thing was, it made me do things I wasn't proud of. I killed so many people, I, I can't be forgiven. And Sasuke kept on rambling and rambling, but Naruto stopped him and slapped him on the shoulder and said, Shut up, she's been waiting to see you for a while now. And he pointed to the door and standing there was Sakura and she ran up and jumped onto, onto Sasuke and started hugging and saying, you know, never leave me again, all that mushy stuff. But Naruto was just glad to see his friend back. And after this, well, Naruto and Sasuke were literally the ultimate duo, defeating every ninja who threatened the village. They took care of Pain, the Akatsuki, and Sasuke finally got to know why Itachi killed the entire clan. And with all of that resolved, that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. You guys don't even know how much time I spent on this what if. Oh my god. It was hours on top of hours, like five hours of continuous work. I am so done right now. I am tired. So if you guys liked it, like, and if you like my content in general, consider subscribing. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next what if? And remember, like and subscribe. <laughs>